Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Long time no see. I'm so excited to be back and filming another video for you. I took a month off. The girls got out of school. It's been a little crazy looking for a new house and all that. So I figured to ease back into YouTube slowly, I would do a Q&A. You guys in April asked me a bunch of questions on one of my videos and then also on Instagram I asked last month. So I got a whole big variety of questions. I broke them up into three categories. So I have YouTube related questions and then I have like life questions and then personal questions that are just about me and my life. I would like to do this monthly. So just you guys send me questions throughout the month and then I'll, I'll do like an end of the month kind of video where I answer your questions. Comment down below if you like that idea. I just think it kind of goes along with why I started my channel to connect with people and help people. And it's hard to do that when you're just putting out videos and there's a bunch of comments. And just let me know if I decide not to do that because you think it's a bad idea, then I will eventually get to the questions that were that you asked me um, at a later time. So I will eventually do another Q&A. And don't think that if we're not going to do the monthly thing that you're not your question won't get answered because it will. So I'll just get right into it. Like I said, I'm going to break them up into categories. I'm going to start with the YouTube questions first. So the first one is, I'm thinking about starting a YouTube channel. Do you have any tips? Now this is... I could really go anyway with this, but I'm just gonna take it step by step because there is a lot of information in this one question. So the first thing you wanna do if you're thinking of starting a YouTube channel is obviously you're gonna have a topic that you wanna, you know, your channel's gonna be about. So you wanna have your main theme of your channel. So then once you know what you wanna do, like let's just say you wanna do a mom channel or mom and lifestyle, like similar to mine, I guess. What you're gonna do is you're gonna pick two types of videos that you wouldn't mind doing over and over. So an example would be you're gonna do vlogs and cleaning videos, or you're gonna do vlogs and grocery hauls, or grocery hauls and cooking videos. So obviously they're going to fit in the same category, but they're gonna be two separate types of videos. You can also choose one type. That I think if people just do one type of video over and over, like cleaning videos or cooking videos, it's easier for YouTube to put you into a category and that's what YouTube is trying to do. Obviously, I didn't follow that. I kind of just did my own thing week to week. Whatever I felt like doing, that's what I filmed and that's what I put on my channel and that made it really, really hard for YouTube to say, okay, this is what her channel's about, this is what she is an expert in or she specializes in. Definitely put my channel at a disadvantage. Not to say that if you just feel like doing what you wanna do that your channel's not gonna blow up in you know a month or two months or three months, but from what I've seen, that is what works. That's the best way for YouTube to put your video, recommend your videos, put your videos out there more, and your video will get seen by more people. If you stick to two types of videos, three is kind of like pushing it. So that's why I say it's just easier to do two. Um, you want to do searchable content, like I said, cleaning videos, grocery hauls, vlogs. Vlogging is not an easy thing. So if you're not like engaging your audience, vlogging it takes time to learn. So I, if you're going to do vlogs and you want to do something that's super searchable, like cleaning videos, grocery hauls, um, that kind of thing, DIYs, just know that once YouTube does put you into a category, it's hard to get out of that. So if you start doing cleaning videos and then all of a sudden halfway into the year you decide, I don't like doing cleaning videos anymore and YouTube already put you in that category, then it's going to be hard to get an audience for other things or you're just gonna, it's kind of like starting over. The second thing you want to do is you want to be consistent with your upload. So you're going to pick a day, a time that every week you are going to post a video. So YouTube really likes consistency. They want to see that you're posting your videos at the same time in the same week. If you miss a day, you will feel it. So 
I'm gonna post my videos Monday and Wednesday or I'm gonna I you know I just don't have the time so I'm just gonna do Sundays just make sure you have your date and your time timing is not as important as the day you upload but it does have some pull so I my suggestion would to be to post your videos as early as possible just because I think that YouTube works on a 24 hour schedule so the more views you get in 24 hours the better it is for that video so if you post later in the day then you're gonna lose all of the people that you could have reached overnight so that's why I suggest that um, I am NOT an expert so this is just what I found and what works for me so just giving you my honest advice and the third thing you want to do is obvious everybody says it you want to have good thumbnails you want to have tags in your videos you want to have a full description box as you also want to have good quality videos just don't um, I know once you start getting on a roll and you feel like you need to put a video up it's easy to just throw a bunch of clips together and you know upload it and call it a day it's just gonna hurt your channel if you know those people are clicking on your video and not watching it uh, there if you're vlogging for example Nobody wants to watch your kid on a swing for 15 minutes. So I see that mistake a lot in vlogs. Like people just focus too much on things that aren't really that interesting to other people. Like, yeah, I like watching my kid on the swing, but woman that is trying to get ideas and late to me probably isn't gonna get much out of that. You can keep those kind of clips in that, but if you focus on something like that for too long, like kids playing in the park for 15 minutes, it's going to lose your viewer so just make sure you're if you can't watch your video you can't even sit through it then who else would want to sit through that so just keep that in mind you want to edit your videos like over and over and over again until you're sick of watching it so you want to take a two hour amount of footage and get that down to 20 minutes you so that is pretty much it then you need to know what when you start your youtube channel Okay, the next question about YouTube is, did you tell your friends and family about your channel right away? And how did you tell them and how have they reacted? Okay, so when I created my first video, I immediately shared it on Facebook. Uh, I didn't tell anybody. I don't think that I was doing starting a YouTube channel. I just did that to whoever was interested in checking it out. They could go do that, but wasn't like telling everybody I knew it was just me doing that indirectly so like I said if they were interested they could go check it out um, I think that if you're having like doubts about um, doing YouTube because of what other people think then it probably is not gonna be the best thing because 90% um, I would say of my friends and family don't get it so they don't really, I mean, the acquaintances, you can tell, they're just like, I don't want nothing to do with you now, because um, I think it's weird to have a YouTube channel. They don't say that to me, but you can tell that that is what they're thinking. Friends are just like, what is she doing? You know what I mean? And most of my family, I mean, friends that know, have known me my whole life probably figured this is something I would do, but I don't think people love it. I haven't had one person, maybe like other than like maybe one or two family members, um, you know, come up to me and say, oh, I love your channel, it's so good. Um, I can't believe, you know, it's so good you're doing this. Like I have, I don't have anyone that's like, this is like the best thing you've ever done. I think that if people are gonna judge you for something that you wanna do and you're not hurting anybody, then they don't belong in your life anyway. So if, people don't like me because I have a YouTube channel, then that's their problem, not mine. Okay, the next YouTube question is, um, how long have you been doing YouTube? And my one year YouTube anniversary was in May. So it's a month, a year in like two months. Okay, now let's get into like the life questions. Do you have any tips on advice on how a mom like me could get ahead from where I am at now? And then it cut off the end of the question. I think the best way that you can get ahead 
as a mom, as a single mom, or a, you know, whatever, a stay-at-home mom, or whatever kind of mom you are, I think that it's important to set goals. So that's the first thing you wanna do. You wanna say, in, and give yourself a specific amount of time. So let's just say you want to take my degree and turn it into, turn it into a teaching degree. So I am going to find classes where I can make that happen and like just so happens that in my area, and I'm not saying that I'm doing this, I'm just giving an example. My area has a nine month program where I can take my bachelor's degree and turn it into a teaching degree. So I'm gonna give myself this amount of time to enroll in that class. I'm gonna you know, set the time to be able to make that happen. It doesn't always have to be going back to school. You can do, there's a lot of things you could do online. You can do real estate, anything that's your passion. You can get your real estate license online. In Florida you can. I know in New Jersey I had to go to classes when I got my um, real estate license, but I did it like a two week class, took the test and passed it and I was done. I think that you need to look online, see what you wanna do, find what your passion is and set goals. The next thing I think is when you're in, you know, when you have young kids and when you're a younger mom, you have this, you go from like me, I went from being in college to you know working a full-time job where i made like a good amount of money and you don't for me anyway you you spend money irresponsibly and i think that when you're in your early when you're in your late 20s early 30s it's important to be smart with your money what i mean by that is i probably would have fit into all that in my you know we wouldn't go anywhere without us matching or everybody had to have the perfect outfit and i needed a rolex and this and this bag and that and you know what it got me i'm 38 years old it got me nothing it got me a bunch of useless garbage that is not even anywhere near what i paid for it or worth what i paid for it so be smart with your money it just doesn't i mean buying a shirt at the goodwill is just you know as rewarding as going into the mall and buying a shirt invest in things that are gonna have value like buying a home be smart with your money my memory card filled up so sorry about that but as i was saying i guess to wrap up that question and i hope i answered it right because it did get cut off on instagram i don't know how to expand it so, you know set goals for what you want to accomplish where you want to be with your career and then also be smart with your money all these things that all these people that you think you need to impress I guarantee you are not going to be there when you need them so just do the right thing it's going to be the best thing for you if you invest your money in something smart and not all these materialistic items that ever. okay so what are you doing for work right now and i do tech support for a company i get to work at home now it's the best option for me it's not my career it's just something that works for me because i have kids obviously and work out of the home job just don't make sense for me right now so you know clothes for work commuting lunch daycare aftercare for my bigger girls so right now this works for me and then what is something you regret i don't like to say that i regret anything because i feel like everything that you experience in life is to who you are today so i would hate to think that like if i changed something like i wouldn't have the kids that i have or anything like that but the one thing i regret is I wish that I found God sooner. So I turned to God with my problems sooner instead of all these other things. Like I'm a big Bravo watcher and you know, you always see them going to psychics and tarot cards and horoscopes and all of that stuff. That's all that's going to get you further away from your, the solution. So if you turn it to God, I feel like the the outcome is closer to where you're supposed to be. And if you turn to all these outside things, you are going to get further away from the whole point of why we're here and why you're here. And I think that the outcome for me has always been better when I prayed about it, when I talked to God about it. And I think that 
I just wish I did that sooner and I, I've always been, you know, Catholic or I've always believed in God, but I just feel like it took me a little bit longer than it should have to turn to him with my problems and that's just one thing that I regret. Okay, the next question is what types of self-care practices do you take do you do to take care of yourself? I'm extremely low maintenance. Yeah. I the only thing I really do is I try to get on the treadmill like four times a week for 30 minutes. I I like to do like three miles. Um, that's pretty much it. Uh, I should probably do more. I just get to stuff when I can. You know, as far as like maintenance, like my eyebrows and nails and stuff whenever I feel like it. Because I work at home, so. A few questions. What brought you guys to Florida? Are you married to the gentleman in your videos? Is he the father of your children? And what do you do for a living? I just answered the what I do for a living. Um, but... So basically, I moved to Florida because I wanted to start over at 33 years old. My, my husband and nine years passed away, and Rich is not the father of my two older girls. He is the father of my youngest, and we're not married. So I was only married one time. Now I'm a widow, and uh, I probably don't want to get married ever again. I just can't see myself marrying again just because been there, done that. My question would be, how hard was it to move away from your family and friends? We moved an hour away from my family, and you would, and you would, we, we left the country. You would think we left the country, probably is what you meant. But, um, it was not that hard. What happened was, my husband passed away, and then in March, and then in June for my birthday, uh, my mom and my sister took me to Florida. All of those months that I was in New Jersey, it was just really, really hard for me. It was just, just like a, you're just in like a fog. So it's just, it was just really hard. So when we went to Florida, it was like the first time, we went to Magic Kingdom and I do, it was like the first time that I actually felt happy. So when I got home from that trip, I was like, I am gonna move to Florida. I feel like that's what I need, it's what my kids need, and that's what we did. The more time that goes by, it is harder for me because I don't get to do all the things that you do when you live close to family. So we don't just get to like do like a day with my mom or, you know, holidays are really hard. And I do miss that. Like I feel like my kids miss that having big Christmas dinners and Thanksgivings and birthday parties. And I mean, eventually... I hope we're around family, but right now this is, you know, where we are. We've already established our life here and I can't see myself moving back up there. It could change any day, but right now I don't see myself moving back up there. Okay, so that's it for this video. That's all the questions. Thank you so much for watching it. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Make sure you comment down below if this is something you'd like me to do monthly. And I do apologize for the little break that I took. Hopefully you guys aren't too mad at me. If you're new, I hope you'll hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.